Uh, we're here today uh, with a 2014 Steady Drone QU4D. Uh, we're going to run through uh, some of the things that you're going to need to do in order to get this this machine airborne. Um, right now, uh, we're looking at a, a, a custom build we just did for somebody. It's got some extra things on it as compared to a off the shelf off the shelf QU4D, um, but everything else is going to be pretty similar. Uh, first thing we're going to look at is attaching the propellers. There's two different styles of propellers. One's right hand rotation, one's left hand rotation. If you hold the propellers like this, the right hand rotation is going to have the printing, this label here, facing the right. You can see the leading edge of the propeller is higher than the trailing edge. And the counterclockwise propeller is the, exactly the opposite. The printing is on the leading edge side on both of them. So this is a clockwise, this is anti-clockwise. If you look on the arms here, these are all labeled for clockwise and counterclockwise operation. And these nuts on here are 10 millimeter nuts. So just get yourself a little nut driver, 10 millimeter. Make sure you get the washer off of there. This washer is tapered. You're going to want the flat edge of the washer down. So this taper is going to face the sky and the nut will be on top of that. So this is a uh, counterclockwise. I'm going to put a counterclockwise propeller on there. It will take a little bit of wiggling around to get it seated all the way down. Put the washer on. Put the nut down. And you don't really want to go too tight on these. You can break this aluminum shaft here. They need to be snug until it stops and then about another eighth to a quarter turn. Um, after the first several flights I would recommend checking these and then I would I would also recommending them uh, continuing to check them every every few you know two to three flights afterwards or if you ever if you remove the propellers at all. I'm just gonna take this off of here to make it easier to deal with. And there is a small washer that's in the propeller already that'll most likely stay on the shaft and that that's okay. Just keep an eye on make sure you got all four of them and you haven't lost any. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the video transmitter antenna. This machine has a video transmitter on it for live video feed. And we're using the video aerial systems blue beam ultras and it comes with a nice little wrench here for for tightening this up and what you're going to want to do is just thread this on here and then use this included wrench to snug it up and that's it now we're going to mount the flight battery pack I'm going to plug it in. And this is getting a green blink with three reds and the green indicates that we're in GPS mode and the three reds indicate that we don't have a very good satellite reception. We're indoors right now so that's that's normal. The, lower, the bottom position on this switch is GPS mode the blue switch, that's your mode switch. The middle position is attitude stabilization, which will keep the craft level and hold altitude, but it will not maintain position. So if it's windy, it'll blow away. And then this upper position is return to launch. That's the fail safe or return to land, return to launch function. Very good. The other switch on the transmitter uh, is going to be the yellow one, and that activates the front LEDs. Let's see here. So over so you can see it. Whoops. I'm not getting it in there. Okay. So that's the yellow switch. Up towards you is on. 
down is away and off. The only other control on the radio is the right knob and that controls the tilt of the gimbal. Turn it right, the gimbal tilts down, left tur it turns up. That beep indicates that you're centered on the, on the knob. Uh, we've got a timer set up on here. So as soon as you raise the throttle above idle, the timer will start counting up. In order to reset the timer, just use this jog wheel here. Oops, yeah, it starts. And then you hold down on the timer to reset it. Uh, this also displays the battery voltage of the transmitter. So that, and the alarm for this will come on at 6.8 volts. So this this will need a need a charge at some point. But I would I would recommend charging everything before you fly. Uh, on the monitor, the power's right here. Just hold this down for a couple seconds. The monitor will come on, and it's already tuned to the correct channel for the transmitter. If you somehow change the channel on this, there's a search button. You just push the search button, and it'll automatically scan through all the channels and find the one that this is transmitting on. And here we have the 2.4 gigahertz data link down, uh, ground station, and you can either connect via Bluetooth to your iOS device, iPad 3 or iPad 4, uh, or you can connect via USB to a PC computer. Uh, a CD is included that has the PC computer application on it, and the iPad application can be downloaded from the Apple Store. I'm going to get the ground station going. You simply take the battery here, and plug it into the connector, and that's it. You can see the, the green link light is on. That means it's powered up, and it's waiting to be connected to the uh, to the air end. Uh, the rest of the things with this, uh, setting up the gimbal and turning the gimbal on, those are all covered in a Steady Drone video um, that they've posted on their YouTube channel <clears throat> that covers balancing your camera on here um, and switching the gimbal on. The switch for the gimbal is right there. And that should be that should be pretty much it. Uh, if you've got any other questions, uh, feel free to give us a call or an email. Thank you. Uh, so we're here with the Venom Medion charger. I'm going to run through uh, basic functions of this and how to get it set up. So you're going to take this power supply out of the box, plug this connect cable into the wall outlet, and then plug these two banana connectors into their respective red and black, positive and negative positions. And then there's a switch right down here, right there. That'll turn on, turn everything on. Uh, once you get it on, you'll use the. Um, you're gonna. Uh, let me back up here. So we're on program select. We want to select the lipo. We're gonna hit enter on that. We're gonna hit the plus to move up to lipo balance charge. Um, this battery we have here is a four cell 4200. So we're gonna take this. 4.2 amps for a 4200 milliamp hour battery and then we're going to set it to four cells so now the charger's set we're going to come over here to the side and we'll take this connector plug it into the balance port and we'll take these two banana cables and plug them into the positive and negative charge ports and we'll take this XT60 connector plug it into the battery and then we're going to plug the balance connector into the four cell position on this balance board here. Now that's all plugged in. We've got our charger set up here for 4.2 amps. Uh, and we're on a four cell battery. And now we're going to push and hold the start button. It's going to check the battery. Ooh, connection. Oh, I'm on the wrong channel. This, cha this button right here will select between the left channel and the right channel. Right now, we're that little red light for channel one's illuminated, so we're going to want to switch over to channel two. Again, we'll navigate to balance charge. 4.2 amps, four cell, 14.8 volts. We'll hard hold down the start button. It's set for a four cell. It's sensing a four cell, and then you start by hit by hitting enter. 
And once the charging begins, it'll display the charging rate there in amperage, the current battery pack voltage. It's the ba BAL is denoting that we're doing a balance charge. This is the elapsed time, and this is the total milliamp hours put back into the battery pack. You push the plus button while you're charging, it'll display the individual cell voltages. And then you put push plus again, it'll toggle back to the main screen. And that's it, it'll emit a beeping tone and say full when it's finished. Uh, if you need to interrupt the charging process for any reason, the big red stop sign will do it. That's it.